Hello, and welcome to our podcast. For the last three years, Hope Church South Bedfordshire here in the UK has had people meeting on weekdays to discuss God's Word together. We've moved this discussion onto this podcast so others in our congregation, our area, and the wider world can enjoy God's Word along with us. In this episode, we're looking at the book of Mark in the New Testament, and we expect as we read, God will teach us and we will help each other learn more. As you listen to the prayer, the reading, the discussion, while you're listening, ask God to reveal things to your heart. The book of Mark was written so that you would come to know who Jesus is. And our desire is that we will all come to know him better as we look at this together. Good morning and welcome to our podcast this morning. And uh, we're looking at Mark 12, uh, 28 to 34. And I've had very kind offers of Faith praying and Bob reading. So over to you, Faith. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can come again uh, in this new day and meet with you and read your word. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us and guide us. And we just thank you again for this opportunity. Amen. The greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Faith. And um, <clears throat> this setting of this passage occurs um, while Jesus is in Jerusalem, headed towards the cross. And Mark has written his um, book, specifically so we can know Jesus and who he is. And it's helping us understand. And Jesus is now, in, in, in this last section, has has been confronting his critics. His critics have been confronting him and asking questions. And we had the Herodians and the Pharisees ganging up on him, asking him tricky questions yesterday. Um, then that was followed by the Sadducees, who tried to um, make fun of life after death and came off short. Um, and this morning, we're looking at a scribe, uh, which means a teacher of the law, probably from the Pharisaic tradition, we guess, um, coming to Jesus and asking him a deep theological question. But the difference with this teacher and the people who've come before is he's actually teachable. And he's actually got some attributes about him of he's responding well to Jesus' answer. And Jesus responds well to him too. And so I think I won't say any more about that just yet. I just needed to set the tone of, of where we are in the passage and um, open it up and see what's on people's hearts and on, on their minds as well. I think this one is the the first genuine question, isn't it? The others have all been uh, trick questions in a way, trying to catch Jesus out, trying to be um, too clever, had their own agenda, um, trying to trap Jesus. This particular teacher seems to have a genuine question. Uh, he really wants to know the answer. Um, so he's different from all the others. 
and it's a very important question and it's um, it's one that we can learn a lot from and Jesus answer yeah I just think it, it sounds like Nicodemus I don't know if it is <laughs> but he always wanted he wanted to know didn't he and um, he was a bit, a bit afraid to um, um, ask in front you know to, to actually come out and uh, follow Jesus but um, you know this teacher obviously wanted to do the right thing so he <clears throat> And Jesus, you know, uh, commended him, didn't he? Um, obviously, um, as you say, the others were trying to trip him up. But, you know, this man obviously wanted to know the truth and um, wanted to make sure that Jesus was speaking the truth as well. So although, it's, you know, it's uh, questioning him, it's good, really, because um, other people heard this as well. And... Um, they knew the commandments, but obviously Jesus goes deeper into that. And really, the commandments are to love your Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbour as yourself. It all really covers everything, doesn't it? Because if you love God, you will love your neighbour. And if you love your neighbour, you will love God, really, um, you know, in the right way. So I think um, this man obviously wants to know was questioning and and searching for God, which um which is good and um it's okay to ask God questions as well. I think. Yeah, um, it, it, it's it's an interesting passage. I'm just looking at the uh, the the uh, re report in Matthew Matthew 22 um, because this one does appear to be a genuine sort of question. But if you read it in um, in Matthew, it says when the crowd, uh, crowd Matthew twenty two starting at thirty three, when the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, "Teacher, which is the greatest commandment?" And he goes through there. So it, it's this this lawyer. Or, or whoever it is, is part of the Pharisaic uh, group, as you, you pointed out. So it, it's a sort of a, um, I, it sounds like he was trying to trap him, but eventually came round to the, to, the, uh, to the recognition that actually Jesus knew what he was talking about. It just reminds me that when, when we're talking to people, G Jesus wasn't defensive. He spoke the truth. And uh, people, uh, people seem to respond so much more to the truth that you speak in knowing the scriptures. It, it's like um, when people say, oh, God's in control. Um, but you've got to understand where God is in the relationship with us, to, uh, that we, are, we have been, uh, he's actually uh, uh, sort of given the, the, the sort of, uh, the control to us, so he works through us into this world. Sorry, I digress slightly, but the, this this uh, this word here that he actually speaks is the truth. It's not the it's not the first commandment. It's the most important commandment, which is to hear o Israel that the Lord uh, our God is one Lord, um, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And it's not just a it's not just a feeling of love. It's a de de it's a decision to love. It's um, and I know we've got only one one word in this in English for love, but it's uh, this is this is a much more focused love. It's not an emotional love. It's a decision to love the Lord your God with uh, with all your heart, with all your so uh, soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and it doesn't allow it. Where with the Holy Spirit, you 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 have determined to love the Lord your God. It's not just oh I, today I love the love the Lord, but I think he's got he got it wrong. <laughs> so I've lost my love for him. It's it's actually I will love the Lord your, uh, Lord my God with all my heart and all my uh, soul, with all my mind. Um, and so it's actually just keeping to that. It's in, in love you trust. You trust what God says to you with all your heart and all your mind, and uh, you love him uh, and push everything else to one side, really. 
I also think that love is action. You know, something. if you don't show that you love someone or if you don't do anything, then are you loving them, you know? Because um, if you love God, as we should be sharing the gospel or we should be showing, you know, showing the love of God in our lives and to other people. And um, I think that's, a, that's, love isn't just a feeling, is it? Because feelings come and go. <laughs> Love is actually, you know, an action saying, look, I love you, Lord. And I want to um, make the, you know, to make life better for other people and um, to love other people and um, be positive and, you know, sort of praise God and say, well, look at what God's done and all these things are loving him. And, um, you know, we think love is a mushy thing. It's, um, you know, obviously when you fall in love with somebody, it is like that, but it doesn't, you know, that isn't true love. The love is comes when it's tested really as well, when we're tested and we go through difficult times and and then, you know, you realise how God loves you because he never leaves you. That's the amazing bit. And um, Jesus demonstrated God's love, didn't he, through laying hands on people and they were well and, you know, speaking the truth and, all the things he did was was God's love because he is love. Yeah, I think um, with, with all our heart um, includes the whole array of who we are as human beings. So it includes our emotions and our affections. And so I don't think it's just a decision that we stick by uh, through thick and thin. There is affection, there is warmth, there is love included in that. And so it's not something sterile, it's something relational. And I think that that's so important. It includes a whole array of human emotion. It's the whole heart. And, and I think that that's so important. And that affection also needs to be on our neighbors as ourselves. <laughs> and, and that's a very powerful thing as well. It's not just, oh, I need to be a nice neighbor. There needs to be a warmth with it. There needs to be a heart engagement with it as well. And I think we love tribes. We love putting people into categories. Uh, I think what's interesting in this is we see the individual response of someone in the middle of the Pharisees, in the middle of that setting of confronting Jesus with tough questions and tricky questions. In the middle of all of that, we see the individual response. And it's just a good reminder to us not to view people by tribe or by association, but actually God looks at the heart. And I think that's so important. <clears throat> yes, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't really mean to say that we we shouldn't have a relationship with God, that we just uh, follow follow the love, uh, like sort of what it says here. The relationship, because the whole thing is a relationship with God. Uh, but it's... I'm just thinking that sometimes with 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 people, you can you can get uh, if you're not careful, you you can allow your emotions to overtake uh, the, this thing. Love, love your neighbour as yourself, um, and uh, sometimes you have difficulty with relationships with with other people, but we have to continue to love those other people uh, with God's type of love. Uh, in, in spite of the fact that maybe what they've done uh, in our own uh, in our own view is uh, is is not lovable, and I'm just reminded that uh, there's a proverb that I was reading the other day that says, "Only I read it in the King James, which says, uh, only by uh, only through pride comes contention, mm-hmm. and pride is self-centeredness." And what, what we're saying here, and it's interesting in verse 31, uh, where it says the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You don't love yourself out of pride you lo- uh, and self-centeredness. You love yourself because God loves you. Um, and it's uh, it, it, that you recognize God in, in you. Uh, in the flesh, you you you, you don't uh, you're not uh, you're not perhaps so lovable, but through through God's eyes, you are loved. Therefore, you can love others through yourself. And uh, you you seem to, I I well I'll, I'll speak personally. I it, sometimes when when things go wrong in a relationship, 
it's very easy to to sort of point the finger at uh, at other people for that it's their cause it's they caused it but in a breakdown of a relationship it, it's it, it's two way and it's sort of uh the 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 breakdown comes through pride only by pride comes contention and i i think that's that's quite a, a, an amazing thing that you can only have a breakdown of relationship through self-centeredness, through pride. And it's in, interesting looking at the word pride, I comes in the middle of it. And it, it's sort of a centered on me. Um, and that's what the love of God does for us. It, it stops us centering on me as, a, uh, as, a, as an individual. It focuses on, on God and that relationship with God. And you know that you're loved by him. So actually, you you don't need to sort of be self defensive or anything like that. And um, gosh, I'm being very deep for this time of the morning. <laughs> um, it, it, this this is there's a there's an awful lot in these two verses, three verses here um, that you could expand and 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 go really sort of deep into your into how you think, how you believe, how you how you relate. And the main thing is, is to relate to God, as you quite rightly pointed out, Nigel. Um, re- relating to God is the most important thing with all your heart, uh, and then with all your soul and with all your mind, so that you're, you actually have that confidence in who you are, and therefore you can, re- you can fulfill the second one, which is you should love your neighbor as yourself, because you've got to know who you are in order to be able to love your neighbor. And if you know who you are through your relationship with with God, uh, the Lord your God, then that gives you a, a, a solid foundation. And I guess with without loving yourself and being confident in that love, um, we end up playing one-upmanship against our neighbours. And you get that kind of like crazy things where people have competitions with God and gnomes and who's God and looks the best and all those kind of things. And contention between neighbors can come from insecurity and come from pride, can come from a lot of different things. But where that secure love with God is the basis of our, our lives and we feel loved by him and we know we're loved by him, then that love can flow to others and be genuine. And it and it takes away the contention. It takes away all of those things and puts us in a very good position. It's a very powerful passage this morning. Um, I was thinking about God's God's love that He, when we seek Him, He woos us. And I know that's an old fashioned word, um, but there's something beautiful in that that He woos us. He draws us closer to Him, and in in effect, that moulds us and shapes us and um, causes us to we we get hunger inside of us that that nothing can fill except God and and knowing Jesus more. And, and I think in that relationship, it, it's a growing. And I, for my own experience, the loving of 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 oneself actually grows with time as we let the Holy Spirit shape us and and teach us and lead us um and then I think as a result of that that's the overflow and we don't naturally have to think I've got to do this it's something that comes out of us um naturally as it were as as we receive more of God's love for us and recognize that then that pours out of us to other people yeah, and I think I think that uh, I'll just share a personal testimony on that. Um, you know, I think we need to see how it hits the road. When I was at school, there was someone who annoyed the life out of me. Um, I was arrogant and proud and full of myself, and and actually, this uh, bloke at school just annoyed me. He seemed to follow around. It just seemed annoying. One day I'm having a pious prayer meeting with God in my bedroom and I'm praying away, God, you're wonderful and all these things. And I felt God say, you need to love this guy. And I thought there is nothing in me that barely likes this guy. 
There is nothing I can, I tried. Is there any feeling I can get to care about this bloke? I couldn't. And God said, you need to love him and just said it over and over again. And I couldn't move on in my relationship with God until I'd addressed this. And eventually, I, I, the only logical way I could find through it was to say, God, you love him. I don't. <laughs> can you give some of your love for him to me? And I felt a peace. And all I noticed at school was this guy didn't annoy me anymore. And after about two weeks, this guy came to know Jesus and actually said I was part of the process. And there was me arrogant pushing this guy away. But it was only when the love of Jesus came into my heart. And so I think God's love and, and this flow of love, of loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, actually has an implication on how we love people alongside us, how we care for them. And that can actually be something felt and known from personal experience. Yeah. I, it, whilst you were speaking, I, I was just thinking uh, my 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 uh, history at school. And uh, pr pride doesn't necessarily mean that you, you actually think yourself better than anybody else. It can also mean that you don't actually love yourself uh, and I, as I was thinking about that, I was just reading uh, verse 31, and it says, the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I'm just wondering whether it's you shall love your neighbor as you shall love yourself. Uh, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's being confident in who you are in God's way of actually loving yourself. Because I can remember what in, in, when I was at school, there was a time when I really felt uh, I, I felt inferior and not good enough, um, and uh, it, it was it was a time when it was made it very difficult to relate to other people when you when you're actually not feeling uh, good enough. And I think there's a lot of uh, I, I sort of shook shook, out, shook myself out of it, but uh, um, it's. It's it's just as it's just as debilitating, debilitating not to feel that you're good enough um, as it is being too uh, on the other side. It's it, it's a, it's the same stick but two different ends. And uh, I, just as I was reading this, God's just saying saying to me that you shall love your neighbour as you shall love yourself, as God loves yourself. <laughs> Uh, and that, that's important because it's not an arrogant love that you love yourself with. It's a it's a it's a love of God for yourself, and you know that God loves you. Therefore, you shall love your neighbour as God loves you. Um, it, I, I think that's quite quite. I've only just sort of seen it like that, but uh, interesting. Just, I think we love love God for not for what he's done necessarily when well, he's done an awful lot for us but for who he is and i think there's a difference we we can uh, we can love people for what they do we can uh love their kindness to us perhaps or that sort of thing but it's a different thing to love people and to love god for who they are um and just going on to the second part where um, it, it talks about loving your neighbour, um, I think a lot of people in the world love their neighbours. Um, I know a lot of people who are full of love for other people, but they don't love God. So I, I think it's we have to be careful not to put but th these two commandments um, back to front, really. The love of God comes first, and that enables us to love people, even people we don't even like, people we um, naturally wouldn't want to have anything to do with. The love of God uh, provokes us and enables us to love other people. And I think, yeah, that's it flows, doesn't it? It flows from one to the other. And... Um, yeah, from from our love from God into the world. Um, I think this uh, scribe, uh, this teachable scribe, is, <laughs> uh, we could look at him. 
Jesus says to him, you're not far from the kingdom of God. And actually, that's quite a powerful statement. And, and that, you know, you think, well, what's in the way then? Um, and actually, it's the revelation of Jesus himself. Uh, in Mark's gospel later on, I don't want to spoil it, but later on we find Jesus uh, dies to pay the price for the sins of the world. And it's just that revelation of who Jesus is and what his death means that stands in the way of the scribe coming through into God's, the fullness of God's kingdom. And so as, as you're listening to this today, I don't know how you feel about love or what your thoughts are going through your head or what God's stirring in your heart this morning um, as, as you look at this. But it's clear that the, the scribe was powerfully affected by it, and no one dared ask him any questions after this. It, it actually had a resolution. There was, a, like, all the questions that were around, and very often we come to God with all our questions. Well, what about this, God, and what about that? And why does this happen, and what's this about? And all those questions, and then it gets personal. And we discover the love of God. And he goes, you're not far. <laughs> Come on. And there, there's that wooing of heart um, and and drawing us closer. And then our questions begin to die down once we discover who he is. And I think there's a beauty in this passage and the flow of it as well. I don't know if anyone's got any thoughts or anything that you feel God stirring this morning. It, just one last one from me, and that's verse 33, where he, he sort of, um, he's sort of feeding back, and he says, and to, and to love him with all your heart and with all uh, all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as himself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. So it, it just speaks to me that the relationship that you have with God is far more important than the religious activities that you go through uh so it's a it's a relationship issue not a not a religion issue and i think that 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 verse 33 is so powerful when i re when i read it and it's actually not god that it's not jesus that's saying it it's actually a revelation in somebody's heart and i think that's so powerful so it's not about being pharisaic it's about actually having a, a relationship with god so it doesn't matter whether you've got the chairs out in pew form or or in a circle. <laughs> it's, it's who you're worshiping. <laughs> now I know um, you know loving other people. Sometimes people can be difficult. I know what I've done. What I felt God show me to do is to say, Lord, show me their heart. You know, show me how you see them. And I think that helps as well because. God sees and he knows all the good things in them. He also knows the bad, but he also, he's looking at the good and he can show you things in people and even things that are hurting them, you know, and that really helps you to pray for them And um, because we need to see through his eyes and then we can love because um, we love him. And uh, as has already been said, it's who he is, not what he can do. But, um, you know, God is love, isn't he? And... Um, and love isn't just mushy either. It's it's also like speaking the truth when sometimes it's hard to do that. It's also disciplining, like listen, disciplining your children, that telling them what's right from wrong, and that's love as well. Because you know we need to do that, otherwise they go astray, they go the wrong way and get hurt. So you know, love isn't just all um, lovey dovey <laughs> and all lovey. It is lovely, but, you know, it's also discipline, also correcting as in, in the way you do it, obviously, really important. But um, I think, you know, we need to see through Jesus' eyes anyway, through God's eyes, DP. Thanks, Jenny. And um, I think we've gone past time, so we need to wrap up. I, I'm just so glad God didn't say, be nice to God and be nice to others. <laughs> He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all, all you've got. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I think that that love connection is challenging. Powerfully challenging when you're surrounded by people that are, are not nice. <laughs> and, and, and God challenges that in us. I feel freshly challenged this morning. 
Um, I'm sure we all do uh, in, in different ways. Um, I think we'll leave it there for today. And thank you all for your contributions and all you've brought. And um, we'll go about our days, hopefully full of love. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to find out more about Hope Church South Bedfordshire, you can find out off our website, www.hopecentral.co.uk. Also, you may like to visit us. We meet at a lovely old church uh, built in 1220 uh, in Tillsworth, part of Dunstable uh, wider area. And um, you're welcome to visit us. We meet at half 10 in the morning and you'd be most welcome to attend and meet us there. Or alternatively, you can find us uh, broadcasting live on our YouTube channel which is also under Hope Church, South Bedfordshire. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope God blessed you loads.